This episode of Because Science is sponsored by Borderlands 3. Mars isn't the most inviting place. The atmosphere is too thin, the surface is way too cold, and there's not enough oxygen for us to breathe. And yet, Mars might be our best extraterrestrial candidate for a radical transformation. Let's get technical. Well, I guess I'm just orbiting. Mars is certainly not a home away from home planet just yet, but it still ticks enough boxes that it's likely our best shot at terraforming another world. Terraforming being the process through which we can enhance a planet's capability to sustain life as we know it. Terraforming Mars would require global systematic change with radical feats of engineering. Radical, like nuking the surface. Nuking Mars has been orbiting terraforming conversations for years, but recently meme-loving billionaires have brought it back into public consciousness, reshaping the surface of Mars with nuclear weapons. So now is a good time to ask, what could nukes do for Mars? Can we nuke Mars? Should we? Let's explore the details in full. Oh, there's my ride. Space car. First, if we are gonna terraform Mars, we're gonna have to change a number of planetary variables. Here are some of the big ones. We can't really do anything about the 60% lower surface gravity on Mars, but we might be able to do something about the very low temperature, pressure, and the very high ultraviolet radiation that reaches the surface. Right now, it is so cold that if you were to spit on the surface of Mars, your spit would freeze before it hit the ground. It is so low pressure on the surface of Mars that it's less than 1% of the atmospheric pressure you're feeling right now. And the ultraviolet radiation is so high on the surface of Mars, it'll cook you. As you can see, we'd have to substantially change these variables if we wanted to successfully terraform Mars. And we've even estimated how much some of these variables would have to change with research and papers going all the way back 40 years. Carl Sagan himself was even thinking about this problem. As it stands right now, broadly speaking, Mars needs more heat, more air, and less radiation reaching the surface. Because for example, right now, even if you were to find frozen ice on the surface of Mars and you wanted to heat it up to get some water for humans, it wouldn't turn into water. It would just sublimate directly into vapor. This is where nukes come in. Wow, tunnels are convenient. There isn't any human-made thing that releases more energy more quickly and catastrophically than an atomic bomb. Just a few milliseconds after an atomic blast, a terribly energetic sphere of air can reach temperatures similar to the interior of our sun. But the most common idea regarding nukes and Mars isn't to use this immense temperature to directly heat up the planet. No, the most common idea is to use nuclear weapons to bring about a kind of global warming. The terraforming kind, not the earth ruining kind. And this isn't what you think it is, it's not. If anyone knows what this is, it's me. It's not one of those. If anyone, trust me, if anyone knows what it is, it's me. And it's not, it's not one of those. That was probably safe wherever I put that. Mars needs more atmospheric gases, yes, but more specifically, it needs more greenhouse gases if we want to really get terraformation going. For example, if we could increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere, radiation from the sun would enter, go through the atmosphere, hit the surface of the planet, try to reflect back out into space, but be captured by those greenhouse gases, thus increasing the average temperature of the planet. Mars does have CO2 to work with, but not really in the atmosphere. What Mars does have is carbon dioxide dissolved into the ice in its polar regions and absorbed into the dirt, the regolith, across the Martian surface. The idea that scientists and billionaires alike suggest is to use nuclear weapons to vaporize all of this carbon dioxide en masse and add air to the planet. Increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere over time would, in theory, warm the planet, or at least parts of it, add air and therefore pressure to the atmosphere and might even make, because of all that, liquid water viable on its surface. It all sounds fairly straightforward, like just doing something and putting a planet on autopilot. Inducing a runaway greenhouse effect is the most talked about scenario for terraforming Mars, but it turns out that quickly transforming an entire planet's atmosphere is a bit more complicated than blowing up a few bombs. 
Terraforming Mars, specifically with nuclear weapons, does sound like an idea that only a billionaire really into anime could come up with, but this has been considered a real climate-changing possibility for decades across the scientific literature. A lot of that literature comes from Martin J. Fogg, a physicist who actually wrote the first textbook on terraforming and in a previous episode of this program actually helped us turn Jupiter into a black hole star. While nuking Mars doesn't sound not awesome, Fogg and others over the years have found a couple of problems with the idea. The first of these problems is energy. Remember that the basic idea here is to use nuclear explosions to violently liberate carbon dioxide trapped in Martian soil and Martian ice to increase the pressure of the planet and heat it up. However, if you actually do the math on this, to get terraformation started, to just increase the temperature of the planet by maybe four degrees, you'd have to nuke the crap out of Mars. For example, one estimate by Zubrin and McKay in 1997 calculated that to maintain a heating power at one of the Martian poles of 27 terawatts, which is 10 times more than all of humanity uses at any one time, by the way, you'd have to hit one of these poles with the largest nuclear bomb that we had every 20 minutes for 50 years. Once you hear numbers like this, you start to sense the scale of the problem. And the raw numbers don't make nuking Mars seem any easier. Across the papers that you can find on this subject, the estimates for the total amount of energy you would need if you're nuking Mars are in the exa to yada joule range, astronomically large numbers. And at the high end of these estimates, the amount of energy you would have to impart to the Martian surface is 10 times the amount of energy the sun hits the Earth with in an entire year. This isn't to say that nuclear weapons couldn't produce these kinds of energies, they definitely could. It's just that figures provided by Fogg and others who you can read in the show notes suggest that we would need an absurd number of nuclear weapons to make this happen. Like multiplying the energy in all of the world's nuclear weapons combined by six million. That's how many nukes we need. Multiplying the world's arsenal of nuclear weapons by potentially thousands or millions and then getting every country on Earth to help get that all to Mars is probably geopolitically complicated, let's say. And then there's the cost. Oh, space car! I think the allure of nuclear weapons is the perceived simplicity of the project, warranted or not. Nuclear weapons we know are crazy powerful, we already have a lot of them, and so if it's a possibility to terraform Mars with them, it feels like a cheap no-brainer, right? Well, even the conservative estimates for the cost of this project in total, based on the cost of making all these nuclear weapons, shipping them off to Mars, putting them in the right places, and then detonating them, are in the multi-trillions of dollars. This cost is equivalent to the GDP of the entire US economy, and some estimates go even higher for this project, equating it to the GDP of the global economy. If manufacturing thousands or millions of additional nuclear weapons sounds difficult, then asking the entire planet to make it rain with literally all the money so that it might one day rain on Mars, that sounds downright impossible. Oh. Is this what it feels like? Estimates of the cost of nuking Mars do vary though, and new technologies could, in theory, give all of these numbers a much more plausible landing pad. However, there's an even bigger obstacle here that we haven't even mentioned. The whole point of nuking the crap out of Mars in this version of terraformation is to release a lot of energy very quickly and heat up the planet with carbon dioxide, increase the air pressure, and possibly make it more viable for water and squishy humans such as we to exist there. It all hinges on the possibility of there being enough carbon dioxide to liberate. But what if there isn't enough? In 2018, a scientific paper was published outlining the potential reservoirs of carbon dioxide across all of Mars, the most recent paper on this very subject. And it concludes, quote, there is not enough CO2 left on Mars in any known readily accessible reservoir to produce any significant increase in temperature or pressure. Terraforming Mars is therefore not possible in the foreseeable future by utilizing CO2 resources available 
on the planet. Taking all of this together, the number of bombs that we would need, the cost, and just the lack of CO2 resources, and nuking Mars stays a dope idea, but it becomes an extremely impractical and unlikely to succeed one. But nixing nuclear weapons doesn't mean there aren't rogue billionaire type ways to start the terraformation of Mars. Carl Sagan himself suggested adding a layer of black carbon over the surface of the Martian poles to over time gradually increase their temperature and vaporize material into the atmosphere. This was of course when we thought there was enough carbon dioxide in the... Other scientists have suggested finding and then flinging a few dozen ammonia ice asteroids at the surface of Mars. And this would both vaporize material with these enormous impacts and add that ammonia to the atmosphere, which is a powerful greenhouse gas. Still others want to build a giant space mirror, not a death ray, a giant space mirror or mirrors that would use the free energy from the sun to heat up the surface of Mars. These are all fantastical and forward thinking ideas, but no matter their ultimate feasibility, nothing that we've described here today gets at the other fundamental problems that we would have to solve before humans can actually colonize Mars. Even if we were to add a lot of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, increase the air pressure, and increase the temperature of the planet, there still isn't enough oxygen to breathe out here. Something would have to add it, and without the right atmospheric conditions, you're gonna fry out here. Consider that if you were on Earth during a very sunny day and 275 milliwatts of ultraviolet radiation was hitting every square meter of your skin, you would get a very bad sunburn in just a few minutes. Now consider that without something like an ozone layer to protect it, the surface of Mars gets bombarded by over 2,000 times the amount of ultraviolet radiation that would bake your skin in just a few minutes. Even if nuclear weapons could unlock all the carbon on Mars and heat up the planet and increase the air pressure, it's not like you could just come to Mars and take off your helmet and walk away. But let's just say that we could do all of it. We could perfectly terraform Mars and turn it into a second Earth. Thinking again about nuking Mars, it feels like with the right technology, maybe we could make all of this happen in a relatively short amount of time, like an explosion of progress, right? But almost all of the research puts the minimum terraformation time for something like this at a few hundred to a few thousand years using technology that we do not currently have. Most likely, not even our grandchildren will breathe Martian air. I'm, I'm just getting a base. So, should we nuke Mars? Well, we could nuke Mars right now, but even the most generous research makes this project at best probably ineffectual and impractical and at worst a dangerous depletion of a planet's economic resources. Still, I think it is valuable for the public and for scientists and for purveyors of propane guns to think about and work through these problems because if the human race is to ever answer our most burning cosmic questions, at some point we will probably have to expand to another planet and we should think about doing that even if it takes an elongated period of time because science i'm just going to make sure this gets away safely but it's not what you think it is it's not if anyone should know what this is it's me I will say though that there are ideas floating around that are a bit more feasible when you're trying to nuke the crap out of Mars. I've seen papers suggesting just exploding just a few, like four nuclear weapons in the right place to throw up enough dust into the atmosphere that it basically creates kind of like a greenhouse gas effect that could do the same thing, but I haven't seen anything other than that one paper suggest that. And there is a larger problem here that we're not mentioning, which is if you're using nuclear weapons to do something to Mars, even if you're creating mini artificial suns outside or near the atmosphere, you're still potentially contaminating a lot of Mars. You might be destroying a significant portion of the surface, and we just don't know if there is something that we might be destroying on Mars yet that we might want to study. So, nuking Mars, cool, impractical.
Thanks again to Borderlands 3 for sponsoring today's episode. The original shooter looter is back and bigger than ever. With four all new Vault Hunters and over one billion guns, literally, it's time to lock, load, and loot. Pre-order Borderlands 3 now so you can play it when it drops on Xbox One, PS4, or PC on September 13th. Let's make some mayhem. Thank you so much for watching, Josh. If you like this video, we have a bunch of other weird science space videos that I know you're gonna enjoy, so go check them out. And if you want to suggest ideas for future episodes or interact with us on the internet, please follow us here at these handles. Thanks.